Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, President of Digital Anarchy. So in this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to use Primat as a smart filter. There's a lot of advantages to using Primat as a smart filter, uh, primarily that you are allowed to go back into it and make changes later. And this is really critical if you're using Primat as part of a batch process. So it's really awesome to be able to run batch on a whole bunch of images, go through them later, see the ones that didn't work out so well, and then have Primat live and active where you can make changes to it. So let's talk about how to do this. So I'm not going to go over too much about how to record an action. We already have a tutorial that talks about how to use Primat as part of batch. But the thing that you need to do is, as part of your recording the action, you want to turn your layer into a smart object. So you want to select Convert to Smart Object. And what this, that's going to do is allow any filter that's applied to that to be applied as a smart filter. And this means that you can go back and make changes later instead of like a normal filter where once you apply it, that's a done deal. It's over. With smart filters, you can go back in at any time and make changes to them. And we actually have a whole separate tutorial on talking a lot about what exactly a smart filter is and how it works. But the first thing you need to do when applying Primat is to convert to smart object and then when you apply Primat it will be applied as a smart filter and be editable later on. So once you do that you can just apply filter Primat and you can see in this case Primat does a pretty good job it's not something we would need to edit later so let's cancel out of this and so let's take a look at an image that we've run batch on and has not come out so well now you can see that we have this layer as a smart object. You can tell by the little icon down in the lower right hand corner. And then of course you can see the smart filters that have been applied and Primat being applied as a smart filter. And then we have our kind of waterfall background that uh, she's been placed in front of during the batch process. Now normally in Photoshop if I just run batch without using smart filters I would have to go reload the original image, get the original green screenshot, reapply Primat, go through basically the whole process all over again. But with smart filters, we don't have to do that. We've got Primat applied as a smart filter. We've got, you know, the, the result of the batch, you know, in pretty good shape. You know, the background's there. Mostly the key's pretty good. The only problem is that we've got a little bit of spill down in her hair along here and over here. So let's go back into Primat. Now what we can do is Primat supplied, you know, again as a smart filter. We can just double click on Primat and then load Primat up with all the settings that were applied during batch. So we don't really need to do much except color correct that hair. So let's zoom in a little bit so we can see the hair that we're talking about. And now all we have to do is just grab our spill minus tool and just start clicking and dragging on those areas that are giving us a problem. And so that pretty much takes care of the green, maybe a little bit here. But you can see that that's done a pretty good job of color correcting it. It's taken us a few seconds to load it up. We can now click apply in Primat. And this will take us back out to Photoshop. You'll see the image with the new Primat settings as soon as it's finished rendering. And that's really all there is to it. So it just makes it much, much easier to correct problems after the fact. So if you're using Batch, if you're applying it to, you know, say 100 different images, this is a really nice way of, you know, on most of the images where it works fine, no problem, you don't have to worry about it. But for the images it doesn't work on, it really streamlines the process and creates a much better workflow than trying to have to redo the entire thing. So just to kind of recap, you want to convert your layer into a smart object, then apply Primat to the smart object. By applying it to the smart object, it automatically becomes a smart filter. You don't have to do anything special to say, I want this to be a smart filter. It just kind of gets put on there as one. And you record that as part of your action which is then used in the batch processing process uh, through Photoshop. And then for the images that have trouble, you can come in and just double click on Primat. That'll relaunch the plugin with all the original settings and we can quickly make changes. So you can see what we've done here is 
I'll undo this. You can see the green spill that I had a problem with is now removed. And it only took us a few seconds of just jumping back into Primat, making those changes, applying the spill minus tool, and then just reapplying it and going back out into Photoshop. So it's a really, really good workflow for dealing with problem images. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it informative. We've got lots of other tutorials on Primat, and we also have another tutorial, like I mentioned, on smart filters themselves, talking a little bit more about smart filters generally. Uh, we, of course, also have the other Primat tutorial on using Primat as a batch process. And really all that entails is just creating an action and then using the automate function and using batch. But there's a whole other tutorial on going into that in detail. And of course we have all sorts of other great stuff at digitalanarchy.com, so swing by the website and check it all out. And thanks for joining me.